Now the brake test is also called a static brake test. Okay, DMV will call it a static brake test. Um, just so that you don't get confused if they tell you, hey, perform the static brake test. You, you already know what it means, okay? It, what they're referring to is your brake test, outside, what we call outside. Right? Just static brake test. Static brake test, yeah. Same thing. Alright, so outside. What's the first test? Air leakage. Air leakage brake check. check. Okay? Bus is completely off. The bus is completely off. You're gonna let the DMV person know I'm performing my air leakage brake check. Okay? You're gonna step on the service brake. You're gonna step and load it. Alright, for an additional 60 seconds. So initially, you step on the brakes, alright? You let them know. Let he or she know. I didn't lose no more than 10 PSI. Okay? You're gonna hold it down for an additional 60 seconds. Okay? That's it, that's that's how you perform it, right? Now you you, you must have watch. Seconds to pass. When 60 seconds pass, let it go and, and just inform them. I didn't look no more than two feet high. Alright? My air leak is great. I have no leaks. Okay? The second thing you're gonna do is your is your low air warning device check. Okay? So now you're checking the low air warning device. It's a device, right? The bus is gonna need some juice. So you Take your master switch, pull it all the way over to um, move it two clicks onto lights. Either lights or night run. But you never start the engine. Alright? All you're doing is giving the bus some power. Okay? Once you do that, you have to drop the air pressure down to 60 psi. Anywhere from 70 to 60 psi, the, the low air warning device should come on. Now you're gonna complete the air, alright? You're gonna fan the brakes. Okay, right now the air pressure is dropping. Okay, it's dropping. Once it reaches 70 to 60 that vicinity, it should go off. Okay? Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you is that you, when you turn it on, you gotta hit the test button. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Okay. Tell them, tell them, tell them. You have to hit the test button and let them know that the low air warning device light and the bus is working properly. Then, you start fanning the lights, okay? Um, and then you let them know, okay, my, my low air warning device is, is working and came on at approximately whatever PSI it says with the air pressure gauge, okay? One more thing, initially when you start, when you start, you can't just sit on the seat and just start everything, the whole procedure. No, you, you should have the bus close to 120. All right, so if it hasn't reached 120 PSI before then, before you began, you want to start the bus and build the air pressure up, all right? Yeah, and let them know. Okay. When you're letting them know, you're showing them this is you. Yeah. You're showing them that you know that you know what you're doing, okay? You don't want to um, turn them. Start at like 90. You start at 90, you step on that brake one time, it's over, you know? <laughs> okay? So, after your low air warning device, you, you're performing your spring brake test, right? Your spring brake. Okay? You follow me? Yes. Okay. So, you let them know, listen, I'm performing my spring brake test. All buses manufactured after 1991 are equipped with a spring brake according to my registration. Behind you should be your manufacturer's plaque. And my manufacturer's plaque, in the back, is bus manufacturer June 2009. Okay? This bus is equipped with a spring brake. Um, before I release my parking brake, look around. Okay? My bus is on level ground. I'm going to hold the service brake and release the parking brake. Once you release it, you want to fan it again. Okay? So you're fanning it and depleting the air. Once it, once it goes anywhere in the vicinity of 40 to 30 psi, 
size on the gauge, it should pop up. But it'll never pop up if you don't push it down. So that's one of the main things, okay? Once it pops up, pops up, let them know, okay? It went off at approximately 40 PSI, whatever it shows, okay? And that's pretty much it right there. Okay. Next is the air compressor cutoff. Start the bus. Start the bus. While the air pressure is building up, you should hear a burst of air in the, in the rear of the bus. Approximately about 120, 120 psi. Okay. You gotta put the high. Right? Yes. You want to put the high idle on at this point to build the air pressure up faster. Okay. In the meanwhile, while the air pressure is building up, you do not want to there, wait for it to build up, you want to perform the wraparound, okay? That's not wrap right, that's protected when you start by New York State law. Pressing the buttons, the is a felony. if you're pulling out what button you're pressing, okay, and, and you're making sure that it works, you're making sure that it works, all right? So, I like to say, you have two rows of buttons, I like to pull out the top five and the middle two. Nine buttons in total, right here on your left hand side. Okay, top five, middle two, and then from there, I back, I pull all those out. I skip all the way to the front. Okay, and I check my defroster. I check it at variable speeds. Then I check my windshield wipers. I also check it at variable speeds, meaning you have to keep clicking over to the right and let it cycle on different speeds. Then I check the the temperature, I mean the temperature. I checked it in water, it's fluid, it should wipe the fluid, okay? After that, you're gonna check the gauges separately, right? You're not gonna say, oh, my gauges are intact. No, you wanna say, my air pressure gauge is intact, it's secure to the bus, it's working properly. My photometer is intact, it's secure to the bus, it's working properly. My telltale pattern, to the bus, I hit the test button, it's working properly, okay? Um, the speedometer is intact, okay? Secure to the bus. You're not gonna say it's working properly because you're not speeding, okay? Um, and below it, my fire suppressant is secure with the tag, and my fire protection panel usually says system is okay. With the green light, let them know. Okay, green light. Um, the right corner over here, you have like a wheelchair. These yeah. buttons right over here. You have the test button, the kneeler, and the step well here. All right? Those are the three buttons I checked here. All right? The test button for the telltale panel, the step well here and my kneeler, that's all I check. Everything else, you really can't check it. So it doesn't make any sense wasting your time pulling out the button, okay? Um, after I pulled that out, that means I went across, I went across from left to right, okay? Now I work my way downward, downward. I'll get up at this point, I'll look at the, uh, Fire extinguisher is secure with the pin, fully charged in the green. Yes. Uh, instructor told us that we had to mention the pen for that. Is it mentioned the pen? pen. Yes. But we're, we're working our way oh. down. I'm still at the top. Oh, okay. Can I show them? Yeah. All right. So, fire protection, I mean, my uh, fire extinguisher is fully charged in the green and is secure with the pin. Then sit back down, seat belt is latched, right? It's secure, it's no cuts or frames. Okay. So now I'm working my way down. The horn. Press the horn. Don't forget the horn. A lot of people forget the horn. Alright? Working properly. The steering wheel has no more than two inches of leg. Go all the way to the right. No binding to the right. Go all the way to the left, no 
gliding to the left. Pull up on the little level right on the steering wheel. Pull it up. All right. Telescopic is working properly. Push it down. The tilt is working properly on the steering wheel, right? You guys remember that, right? Works my way all the way down. All the way down at the floor, I have the um, my high beams. High beams and low beams. All right, looking at the panel, the telltale panel, working properly. All right, left signal is working properly. Right signal is working properly. My my service brake and accelerator have good rubber. All right, the operator's compartment is clear and free. Okay. By then, at some point, by then that air compressor, the air compressor went off. It burst. Whenever, while you while you're pulling things out and you're checking these buttons, you have to keep an open ear. Whenever it goes off, that's when you stop what you're doing. You just pause it, basically. You pause what you're doing. You say, okay, my my air compressor just went off, and you let them know whatever the the reading is saying, all right, on the air pressure gauge. Um, if it didn't go off, or maybe you missed it, this is when you turn around and you say, okay, I'm at 120 PSI, so I didn't hear it, or it hasn't gone off yet, you understand? But it's good to know that we're at 120, okay, I may have missed it, or it hasn't gone off yet. Um, after that, you can perform your parking brake test, which will be with the parking brake up, put the bus in drive, and make sure it's in drive. Like, don't press the drive button without holding down the service brake, okay? Hold down the service brake, put the bus in drive, and proceed forward, drive, okay? Go like that, hit the, hit the accelerator, it doesn't move anywhere. Parking brake is working properly. Service brake. Service brake, you have to um, release the parking brake and move the bus anywhere from 10 to 50 feet at 5 miles an hour. You simply stop the bus nice and easy and let them know the service brake is working properly, okay? At that point, you can do your, you can, uh, so after that, you've got to set the bus up. All right, set the bus up for uh, exterior pre-trip inspection, or if you like, you can do the interior. Okay. Um, one thing you can't do, though, you cannot check the outside of the bus with the bus on. Always remember that. Okay. Upon request, priority seating must be given to people with disabilities. All right, so let's set the bus up for pre-trip inspection, and then we're going to go outside and um, do the inspection. 